Just letting you know, this is only my spoiler first impressions of the episode. Check my pinned comment for a free gift related to this video. And to watch my unfiltered reactions with exclusive bonuses, join my Asha Media TV Club. The link is in the description box below. Now, here's my afterthoughts of this episode of Fringe. This episode really took a direction that, honestly, I'm so glad I never bet any money on trying to, <laughs> trying to figure out. It's like, I, I am slightly worried. Like, how... Uh, uh, okay. And this is a show that I've noticed does not, thankfully, drop the ball with their, um, for the most part, for the most part. I know season one, there's an exception with that because there was a lot of growing pains with what they were doing with the whole show. But in general, for the most part, they don't just introduce something and then completely disregard it later on. Everything kind of comes back to, they're all related, interconnected, right? So this whole thing with these uh, people willingly turning themselves into creatures uh, for a new world, new world order, I guess, <laughs> that Jones is trying to create world domination. He wants to be uh, this universe's god, maybe. Okay. Hot damn, hot damn. Okay. Um, let's, let me now be more focused here with my commentary and start from the beginning. I just like that they're giving us a full case that it's familiar from the first season. The story, this whole thing with the timelines, gives them permission to do that. I think that's great. I think that's great. And I hope they do that maybe with a couple more other cases. Without looking into it, what's another episode of season one? I wouldn't mind seeing an alter, alternate case. Just give me a sec. I just want this moment to share it with you. If I can think of one. 17 is not bad. I mean, 17 was pretty good, right? And it would be nice to see that actor again, Nick. I don't remember if they mentioned Nick for this timeline. But a, a similar case like that would be neat. Because we have to, I guess I have to consider, she ran away from the trials, right? But everybody else was still there. So a different episode with a Nick. Maybe a different ability he develops instead of the one that we saw in season one. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that. Okay, okay. I'm not going to get too carried away with that. So that's the first thing I appreciated was the nod back to that episode and seeing the differences. This time, instead of hulking out on a plane, he hulks out somewhere else. And so that plane never crashed. Those lives are still there. Um, now, I was slightly disappointed, not going to deny, that I thought it was going to be a whole different beast instead of the porcupine looking thing. I thought it was going to be just, I don't know, something else, just something else. So there was slight disappointment, but considering now what they showed af afterwards, it was fine. It was fine. Okay, moving on. Um, what else? Oh, yes. I definitely have to note this part with the interview and the psychiatrist and bringing back the same actress and just the same vibe of that scene when she was in the red verse. Oh, that's just such a beautiful touch to put in that and even the tone of the scene is the same and uh, the psychiatrist and her slight little smile right while Olivia's talking nonsense to her or craziness to her oh it was so well done so well done and I had said too like that is quite I like the realism of that I love where they can bring in that if you had an agent for real who was telling you that they now have memories of a different version of themselves. It is nutty. Anyway, anyways, okay, that scene was great. That scene was great. Let's move on. Do, do, do. Okay, so Peter and Olivia. All right. As I said in my previous reaction, I'm accepting that this is the story of our Olivia. No need for him to find that machine and go back home. That's done with. This is the universe to. Uh, this is the main universe. All right, right? So that's fine. It's now just the back and forth with how it affects the people around them, starting, of course, with Lincoln. <sighs> he took it well, and I love the conversation between him and Peter. That was wonderfully done. But showing the 
glimpses of his hurt with it and his, you know, his bruised feelings. It's hard to see. It's hard to see. So I hope I hope they find, like, if anything, I hope they find maybe, I mean, I don't think they'll have time to shoehorn a character for that purpose, and that wouldn't be good. So, yeah, I wouldn't want to see that trope, to be honest. But maybe if they if there's an organic way for it to happen in the story, for him to fall for someone, you know, it crossed my mind. I'll just say it right now. I may not repeat it again unless they give me a reason to. But I was like, well, Astrid is there. And I actually thought at one point when they introduced this Lincoln, that Astrid and Lincoln would be kind of a good match. I even had that thought. They haven't shown anything when it comes to Astrid and her personal life. I mean, I shouldn't presume she'd be into guys either. But either way, I'm just saying, if they don't want to throw in another character into the mix, um, Astrid and Lincoln, I would not be opposed to that. <laughs> so secretly, I think I'm shipping them for both their sakes. I think they're good people and they'd be a good fit. Okay, so let's move on a little bit now. Yeah, the part that just... I don't, I, I don't know. There's some stuff, people, that gets me so sappy and sentimental. And there are things that are more, I guess, I've been told this, like, there was stuff I'll cry at that nobody would care for. But that part where Walter is bringing out the gifts that he bought every year for Peter. And so early in the episode, too. Wow. Just wow. It's not necessary, but they put it in there to add just even more... More to the layer of the love this man had for his son. The whole, the whole, oh, it was great. It was great. And I, it was so surprising too. And it would make sense that Walter would do that. It's my favorite scene of the episode. Because it was just, it was out of nowhere, but also a perfect fit. That's the best way I can describe it right now. Okay. And then of course, Peter hugging him. Oh, it was, it was great. It was great. All right, uh, keep going, keep going. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. So the, the usual suspects from the first case wasn't, wasn't the situation, but I love how it led them back to the bookstore and the whole interaction with him was fantastic, especially the way he, <laughs> the way he was hitting on Olivia. Uh, you really can't blame him for trying. <laughs> I loved it, though. But just the roping of it, right, to kind of, Get him, get to see if he'll bite in helping them without directly asking. I thought that was just, just great. It was good comedy in and of itself, but also fits well what what I, how I perceive that character to be when they've shown him before. You know, you gotta, you gotta whet his appetite, and they did it in a very, very cool way. All right, and we have them at the house. It's, it's a classically good dark horror episode of Fringe, I would say. With a, with a slice or a little sprinkle of romance between Beauty and the Beast. So let me move on to that one, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know what else to say to it. I mean, to give it that extra dimension of this couple that's making this willing choice to do this to themselves and showing that it's not just a beast. There's the consciousness of the actual person in there who's who recognizes her and they have their relationship together and they don't even have to put something like that. And I can see how some viewers might find that just a bit too much. You know, it's unnecessary fluff perhaps, but I appreciated it because it made me connect to her grief when he got, when Lincoln had to shoot him. And it's not like they just showed her just the one time having them then, you know, fly off together. I got the Beauty and the Beast thing in my mind there and gargoyles. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, I like that extra touch because to me, the more you can get a viewer connected to what's going on, no matter what level it is, even if it's on a very superficial layer, which of course that's all you really can do with these kind of um, episodic stuff with, you know, the monster of the week kind of thing. But in this case, it's not really a monster of the week situation. It looks like it's the starting of monsters to come. I appreciated the connection that they put there because they really didn't have to. I mean, this was just a highly entertaining episode. I love the interaction between Walter and Lee. They're, they're interesting together. 
I like to see them banter back and forth a bit more often. All right, so um, I think I've touched on the main points. And before I give my Ash Emoji rating, the last thing now is what's going on with all this. From what I've understood right now, after just watching it, it's just another group. And I, in a previous reaction, I was talking about how what it looked like with Robert Jones that was going on was there was going to be another ZFT-like group. And I think it came out, I, I think it's been misunderstood where I thought another ZFT group, not, I didn't mean an actual ZFT group. I meant another one that would be similar, a group that would have ulterior motives like the ones they're talking about to do some kind of damage or create some kind of world, as they said here, um, of people uh, evolved. Basically, Fringe's version of X-Men. <laughs> okay, that's the, that's the only way in my with my vernacular right now I can express myself. And so that, now, the slight worry, like I said, is I hope it uh, it's not going to go too off into the deep end of things, but I'm trusting it's not because I don't think this season would be would be so loved if it was completely off the rails. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. Therefore, my Ash Emoji rating. It's a five. Yeah, it's an excellent episode. Really good. Very watchable. I mean, I can put this down as the one episode that got me screaming out of my chair. Literally. <laughs> so there you have it, people. Those are my afterthoughts for episode 16, Nothing As It Seems, from the fourth season of Fringe. If you want early access to my reactions to Fringe, join my club. Details is in the description box below. You'll get access to a lot of other stuff that I share only with my club members beyond just Fringe. So feel free to check it out if that's something that interests you. Okay, people. So before I sign off from this video, I just want to let you know that at the moment I'm recording this, it is up for debate with my club members because they get that early access and that privilege to determine uh, through a poll or a survey that I've put up with them whether or not um, I'm going to skip episode 19 because apparently episode 19 has information that would help me understand season five and watching it last is better. So I didn't want to just trust one person's or actually a handful of people that were telling me to do that. And so I've put it up as a poll. So just don't be surprised if in the coming reactions, episode 19 will not be included until the end. But of course, I will remind uh, viewers of that in the following reaction videos that I post anyway <laughs> okay so until episode 17 I'm tuning out peacing out bye <laughs> thank you so much for watching be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos